The non-pro Euro and the Google Wi-Fi system are almost identical spec-wise, but they have a lot of software differences. So let's get into which one is best for you. After a new month of testing, I determined that the non-pro Euro is the better mesh system because it has a flawless setup, it's more consistent, and it has a dead simple app. However, the Google Wi-Fi system has close to the same pure speed and it has a bunch of extra software features like a bandwidth interface and free content filtering for parents. If you want to find out how I reached my conclusion, stay here as we go through the setup, the software, the performance, and the design. And then I'll make a recommendation based on which is best for you. And then I'll throw in the premium mesh systems like the Euro Pro and the Nest Wi-Fi to see where those fit into. Euro's installation process is smarter than all the other mesh systems because it assumes you know nothing and holds your hand the entire time. Euro tells you exactly which cords to unplug and where to plug them in and when to plug them in. It may sound silly to explain simple steps, but less problems occur because of this. I've installed some version of Euro eight different times and it's consistently the fastest and it loads really quickly. My parents who struggle with technology could get a network up and running in just 10 minutes and in my latest install, I did it in five. Google Wi-Fi jumps into the installation without telling you when to plug in the router. And to make matters worse, it doesn't instruct you to unplug your modem before you get started and you're normally gonna have to do that if you want the installation to go smoothly. And sometimes because the app loads so slowly, you're not sure if the configuration is still making progress or it's just broken, but it's usually broken. To save yourself some time, you should unplug the modem from the outlet and then plug the modem into the router with the ethernet cord and then plug both the modem and the router back into the power. Once your modem and router are both powered on, you should scan the QR code on the back of the Google Wi-Fi which will then connect you to the dummy network and then open up the Google Wi-Fi app and configure from there. If you follow these steps, you shouldn't have too many issues. I've installed Google Wi-Fi seven different times and I've run into issues in half of them with app crashes or just different configuration issues. But in my latest install, I got the system up and running in 15 minutes. Euro's app is fast loading, easy to navigate, and has a ton of advanced configurations. Anybody can figure it out. Euro's new app prioritizes the devices and family profiles rather than real-time bandwidth usage. Some might not like this approach, but I think it'll have more mainstream appeal. For most people, Euro will configure all the settings by itself, but for the nerds that wanna go deeper and change the port forwarding and DNS settings, Euro has that for you too. With Euro, you can group certain devices together and put them in different profiles and then create scheduled access for those profiles. You can also pause any device or entire profile with one tap. Euro has one of the nicest interfaces for scheduling access that I've ever seen in a mesh system. Euro has tight Alexa integration. You can find where your phone is based on which node that it's closest to or just pause the entire internet during dinner time. Euro is also one of the few systems to support Apple's HomeKit. When you add your Euro device to the Apple Home app, it creates a firewall between your network and your smart devices. What this means is that if one of your smart devices becomes compromised, it won't take down your entire network, just that one device. Let's get into a few annoyances that come with Euro software. You can still see the real-time bandwidth, but you'll have to go through and manually tap each device to see which one is using your resources. And to make things worse, Euro has never had an interface to show you cumulative bandwidth usage. So if you wanna see how your devices are using the resources on your network, Euro is not for you. Another downside to Euro is that you can't give household members admin access. If you want admin access on two different phones, you'll have to share an account. And the final downside is Euro's optional subscription service, Euro Secure. For $3 a month, you get better security, ad blocking, and content filtering, which is great, but the problem is that a lot of these features are free on Google Wi-Fi. The Google Wi-Fi app is intuitive and it has a great layout. Google Wi-Fi has a feature called Family Wi-Fi, which is very similar to Euro's family profiles. You'll get all the same scheduling features, it's just not quite as smooth as Euro. And just like Euro, you can tap on a device to see which node that is connected to. You'll also get all the same advanced configuration options and guest network setup as you do with Euro. 
So now let's talk about four main Google Wi-Fi features that differ from Euro. With Google's family Wi-Fi, they have a feature called Safe Search Filtering, which will block millions of adult sites from the profiles that you choose. Euro has this feature too, but it's gonna cost you $3 a month to get it. You can see real-time stats for each device on your network. It makes troubleshooting your network a lot easier because you can easily see which devices are using the most resources. And then sometimes you might find something that is downloading in the background that you don't even know about. Google also has a great interface for cumulative bandwidth usage for your entire network. This could be essential if you have a cap on your bandwidth usage from your internet service provider. And the fourth feature is anyone with a Google account can be added and given admin access. There are a few downsides to Google Wi-Fi software. It requires a Google account, which I'm sure most of you have, but some don't like this. It doesn't always play nice with VPNs or Wi-Fi calling, and there are a lot of threads about this on Reddit. And the final downside is that Google Wi-Fi is four years old, and because the Nest Wi-Fi app is using the Google Home app, I'm not sure how long the Google Wi-Fi app will continue to be updated. The non-pro Euro, also known as the Euro Cupcake, and the Google Wi-Fi have almost identical hardware. This means that they both have about the same amount of range and they'll both offer the same theoretical bandwidth limit of about 600 megabits per second when in a mesh system together. While my testing methods are flawed, they are extremely thorough and I do them the same each time. And if you wanna learn more about them, you can check out the first video in this series where I tell you what I do to get my numbers. My maximum speed is 117 megabits per second and my numbers aren't really relevant to you and we don't have the same house. But I'm still gonna provide you with my numbers to just give you one more data point in your research. With two Euro cupcakes, I averaged 94 megabits per second in my house and backyard. With three Euro cupcakes in my house, I averaged 97 megabits per second. The Euro cupcake and the Google Wi-Fi are both dual band systems, so this leaves less room for communication, whether that's from node to node or node to client. Euro Pro and Orbi are tri-band systems, which will typically result in faster speeds overall. While the non-pro Euro and Google Wi-Fi won't set any performance records, I think it has plenty of power for the average user. Euro has a feature called Optimize for Conferencing and Gaming that will automatically prioritize the important devices without hurting the performance of the others. There's another feature called Band Steering that will try and put all 5 gigahertz capable devices onto that channel to optimize your performance. Compared to Google Wi-Fi, Euro typically brings more consistent speeds and it thrives with overall stability. The network never cuts out when your device moves from one node to the other, and you won't notice when this switch happens like you do with other mesh systems. In my testing, I averaged 87 megabits per second with two Google Wi-Fi routers. With three Google Wi-Fi routers, I averaged 97 megabits per second, which is the exact same that I got with the three-piece Euro system. I'm not sure why my numbers differed with the two-piece sets, but I would chalk this up to more of a fluke than anything inclusive. Google and Euro perform close to the same, but they have different methods of getting there. During my test, Google offered up a higher potential for speed, but there was way more variance in those tests, so the numbers averaged out to be about the same as Euro's. With Google, I was getting close to that 117 max number often, but there were other spots where I could only get 50 megabits per second. When with the Euro, I was almost at 100 almost everywhere I went. It was just more consistent with Euro. And outside of my fixed testing that I do, during random check-ins, Google Wi-Fi was almost always slower than Euro. I can't nail down a specific reason for this, but I saw the same thing when I tested Nest Wi-Fi, just to a lesser extent with Google Wi-Fi. Euro automatically prioritizes devices that are streaming, but Google gives you way more control of how you wanna prioritize things. With Google, you can choose any device and then prioritize that device for one hour, two hours, or four hours. So if you have limited resources and you want full control over which devices get priority, Google might be a better bet for you. But I think Euro's approach makes more sense for most people. Euro comes in a glossy white finish and it's shaped like a cupcake. The standard three-piece Euro set comes with five available ethernet ports. And one advantage Euro has over Google is that the ports are auto-sensing and interchangeable, so you can plug the modem into either port. The Google Wi-Fi nodes are a little bit taller than Euro, but they'll stay out of the way and they come with a nice matte white finish. I prefer the matte finish over the glossy finish because it attracts less fingerprints. 
and the standard three-piece Google set has five available Ethernet ports just like Hero. Google Wi-Fi also has a nightlight feature where you can control the brightness and schedule it to turn on at certain times. Get the non-pro Euro if you want the easiest to use mesh system on the market. It has a user-friendly app and it's one of the easiest tech products that I've ever installed. I'm confident that anyone of any age or technical background can get a system up and running without any hiccups. And Euro's performance is a bit smoother and a little more consistent than Google Wi-Fi. Get Google Wi-Fi if you want more control over your network. You'll more easily be able to troubleshoot issues because all your devices are listed in order of real-time bandwidth usage and you can decide to manually prioritize any device at any point. Euro is great for parents, but I recommend Google Wi-Fi to parents that want all the content filtering options for free rather than paying the $3 a month. So now let's talk about which configuration would work best for your house. The amount of nodes that your house will require will depend on your house's layout and the size. But having more nodes in your house doesn't necessarily result in a better system because you may run into signal overlap from having them too close to each other. If your house is on the borderline between two and three nodes, you can start out with two and then add the third if you need it. And if you don't need it and your system's running well, you can just sell the third node or give it to a friend. So you're probably wondering where Nest Wi-Fi and Euro Pro fit into this equation. Euro Pro has faster and stronger radios and it's a three band system compared to the two bands from the non-pro Euro system. This extra band leaves more room for the nodes to communicate with each other, which will result in a faster network. In my testing, the Euro Pro was about 16% faster than the Euro Cupcake. But I still think the non-pro Euro is a better bet for most people because you won't notice these speed differences in day-to-day -day life. But Euro Pro is something to consider if you have gigabit internet and you want to maximize that potential, or you just want the best of the best. I wanted to love Nest Wi-Fi because I like Google Wi-Fi and this is just an upgrade, but I ran into a ton of stability issues. Nest Wi-Fi wins across the board on the spec sheet. It has 25% more range and twice the theoretical bandwidth limit as Google Wi-Fi. Nest Wi-Fi can match Euro Pro in pure speed, but my network was hovering around 10 megabits per second way too frequently and I don't know why. I had issues back in February and then I rebought a different configuration in July and had issues as well. If you want to learn more about Nest Wi-Fi, I compared it to Euro Pro and you can see that link in the description. All I'll say is that I can't recommend it right now, but with future software updates, things may get fixed. All right, that's all I got for you and this video will conclude the Mesh Router series for now but I may go back and add more videos later. I know most of you subscribe because of my Mesh Router content but I need a break right now. I can't talk about mesh routers anymore after testing like 20 different configurations over two months. It's too much. And I still want more feedback from you guys and things that you want me to review and compare next because this channel won't continue to grow without real honest feedback. So thanks for watching and I'm out.